There's a lot to be said about the fashion of succession. Slay what you wanna slay! And yes, we'll also be talking about that. But the idea of quiet luxury that the elite so carefully emulate is captured perfectly within the wardrobe of the characters within the show. Subtle cues of this display of wealth have come up in the form of this very unassuming baseball cap that Logan and Kendall wear that retails for $1,195 as well as this tweed plaid blazer that she wears that is valued at $2,795. But in their eyes, this is just chump change for them. Being that there has been so much buzz around the show and there has almost been a cult-like following for Succession, I think it's about time we do a really deep dive of the fashion choices of our favorite family on TV so far. Also, hello there cool cats, welcome if you are new here. My name is Malaya, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So in order to really understand why the elites wear this billionaire norm corp type of aesthetic, we really have to take a look at a rising movement that has popped up within the inner circles of the uber wealthy. This term being coined stealth wealth. One of the earliest coverages of this idea came about in a Forbes magazine article that they published all the way back in November 2006. Opposed to the flashiness of flaunting one's lavish lifestyle of diamond and crested jewelry, fast sports cars, the overall message of stealth wealth is to be more subtle and understated with your choices. Think of the idea of if you know, then you know. These cues are unreadable to the general public, but those in the know are quickly able to spot your one-of-a-kind and difficult to find shoes, watches, or clothing. Many of these individuals are not in fact as logo driven, but strive to emulate a very chic and sophisticated look. This mindset also extends past fashion as limited edition Omaz pens or bottles of rare Hennessy cognac like the Ellipse reveal this hue of wealth and status. And Robert Johnson, a British trader of style, was quoted in the Forbes article saying, it's all about the little details you see in people and knowing what to recognize. If you don't know what to look for, then the stealth wealthy have accomplished their task of being under the radar. More recently, this movement has also gained more traction with many articles being written on how to adopt these skills of the truly wealthy. It's no wonder that the wealthy want to blend in with the crowd as we all know the famous quote from the poet Biggie, Mo Money, Mo Problems. Achieving an influx of new wealth can create envy within your surrounding party and you can obviously become a vulnerable target to scammers. With the discourse of the ever-increasing wealth gap between the investor class and the working class, it's in these individuals' best interest to ease on their public display of wealth, to really fabricate a sense of normalcy and relatability to their peers and loved ones. Implementing an average sense of style, these elites can appear like the common man, like any other person on the street. Once looked at very closely, those with a keen and observant eye can really pick up on their faint cues of luxury. Michelle Matlin made sure to embody the fashion of the uber wealthy with the brands that she handpicked. From brands such as Brunello Chuccinelli, Laura Piana, The Row, Mason Margiela, and Armani, these were just among some of the brands that Matlin chose to include for the characters in succession. And I think that the styles of the characters can even be harkened back to the styles of the real life figures of the tech billionaires such as Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg. Known for their more casual approach to their wardrobe, the men wore very staple pieces such as the black turtleneck that Steve Jobs was known for during his time as well as these plain gray t-shirts that Zuckerberg also chooses to sport. Though these pieces may look like any other garment that the average Joe can afford, 
they certainly are not. That black turtleneck that Steve Jobs wore is actually an Issei Miyake piece that allegedly cost $175. And as for that gray t-shirt, this custom ordered piece is a cool $300 a pop from designer Brunello Chuchinili. With all the characters, I think Matland was very intentional to present this kind of a shock factor for these clothes that at first seemingly are very simple actually come with a very, very steep price tag. For the sake of this video, we'll be diving into the decisions that Matlin took with the characters as she carefully crafted a guide to how the elites really operate with their style choices. When we think of how money is portrayed, it's oftentimes with very flashy designer bags and jewelry, but when it comes to the Roy family, Matland was quoted saying, they don't need to present themselves that way. Of course, they're going to be buying expensive accessories and clothes, but they don't need to posture. As the patriarch of the family, Logan Roy's style throughout the course of the season exemplifies the type of power he has over all domains within his life. The dominance he exerts is right in your face and you can really feel the intensity of his character with the ways in which he is really willing to fight tooth and nail for the company he spent so hard at building and how he meticulously controls his children so they are under his obedience. For a man of such high caliber, Matt Lind mainly made sure to put Logan in bespoke suits by the famed tailor Leonard Logsdale. So this legendary New York tailor specializes in men's suits and are handcrafted by him and his team on site in Manhattan, New York. At a price of about $8,500 per suit, Logsdale makes no apologies for his pricing being that he is one of the last true bespoke tailors in the United States. So he really built up his reputation as a skilled tailor as he has suited up very famous Hollywood men such as Leonardo DiCaprio in Wolf of the Wall Street, Denzel Washington in American Gangster, and as well as Daniel Craig in his Broadway shoes. Logsdale's pieces are very artisanal and the kind of precision he has within his suits really speaks to the type of men that are actually able to afford to snag them a piece. And when Logan is not wearing these suits, he pretty much switches up for more of a casual shawl cardigan, which is very reminiscent of that old money aesthetic that has been emerging, very much so within the internet. These include fabrics such as cashmere, tweed, or wool. And I think it's this idea that only men like Logan can have the means to access such understated high quality pieces and fabrics like this prove his very distinguished and classic look to assert his very king-like status as he wields his power towards everyone around him proving time and time again that they should know better than to be messing with him and to put it bluntly to fuck off. When it comes to the Roy children, Matlin took special care in Shiv and Kendall's wardrobe as they take precedent over Roman style. In an interview with Vogue Australia, Matlin mentioned that as opposed to the two siblings, Roman has more of an exactness to his style, signifying that compared to Shiv and Kendall, he's not overly concerned with his external appearances. He is really able to understand himself in that department, whereas for Kendall and Shiv, they are in constant conflict of how they should be perceived from their father, Logan Roy. Jeremy Strong's Emmy-winning performance of Kendall Roy is a testament of how he became truly enveloped in his character and Strong even revealed in an interview from W Magazine that he has had some responsibility picking out some of the wardrobe for Kendall. And Kendall's style is typical of what you might 
expect the air of a multi-billion media conglomerate company to wear seeing as he is in line to possibly succeed his father as ceo of waystar royco he makes sure to display the appearance of the typical businessman throughout the course of the three seasons he predominantly wears suits made from Truccinelli, Armani, and Laurel Piana. And the Laurel Piana baseball cap that Logan and Kendall have been seen sporting starts at about $450, with their most expensive hat being $1,195. However, as Kendall eventually starts to devolve as he was fired in his failed attempt at a coup d'etat, well, multiple attempts at that, paired with his battling addiction. And let's not forget the infamous killing of the waiter at his sister's wedding. Um, his wardrobe really starts to translate this inner turmoil that he's facing. Moving on from Waystar, I think that Kendall tries a little bit too hard to emulate a much more hip business casual look as he is trying to go into the art business himself. In the episode Prague, he switches out his regular suits for a casual printed dress shirt along with a blazer and some dress pants and these lawn vin sneakers all in an effort to impress his new friends at the tech startup. And after the role he played in the death of the waiter, we also see how Kendall pretty much shells himself in from the outside world. In many instances of the show, he escapes into his music as he's seen wearing these $549 on Amaron headphones he likes to wear. And most importantly, for his 40th birthday, he also showcases his interest within the streetwear style. In this article by Heisner Bridey, they point out this very super rare Gucci bomber that is a major flex and originally retailed for about $6,900. As for the chain he wore, Strong had a strong influence Ooh. as to this piece. For this piece, he was inspired by Rashid Johnson's collab with Liz Swig from a series of paintings called the Anxious Man Paintings. This 15K necklace was also part of a collection of 15 limited edition jewelry pieces, and Strong was really influenced to include this as part of Kendall's birthday outfit as he wanted something quote unquote colossal. And this obviously became a favorite of his as he chooses to wear the piece in Italy as well. I think that overall with Kendall, he is very confident in his style and he's willing to push himself out of his boundaries to create a very unexpected, bold look. For Shiv, Matland expresses her character evolution through her clothing and hair as well. In the first season, Shiv has more of a softness and laid-back nature to her style. With this specific outfit in mind, as well as her use of very earthy tones within her color palette, at this point in time, Shiv is very much a separate entity from her brothers and she doesn't choose to want to be part of the daily squabbles over who will succeed who of CEO at the company. She has much better things to worry about as she is working under the Bernie Sanders-esque politician. However, when Logan expresses her approval of Shiv possibly taking over, this is when Shiv suddenly starts to take a shift in her interest. Now that she is up for the running, suddenly she takes more of an effort to appear as a business savvy girl boss woman that is set to succeed her father. She cuts her previously long locks to a much sharper shoulder length bob as she wants to appear more competent and that she herself is worthy of gaining the respect from the male dominated space that is the business corporate world. Now, everything must be cinched and structured and her clothing really consists of mainly a black turtleneck, power suits, blazer, dress pants, really tight fitting dresses all to equip herself in her own suit of armor as she's competing against her brothers now. So this is expressed in the pinstriped Ralph Lauren dress suit that's estimated at about $900. 
as well as the Giorgio Armani tweed blazer and dress pants that comes together to be about $4,200. And as we can see, Shiv is certainly set on the quest to prove herself to her father as being the best option there is. And here's the duo we never thought we needed, but have grown to love so much. For these two, Greg and Tom are what we call as strivers. Being that neither one of these men were born into or exposed early on to such vast amounts of wealth, I think that Greg and Tom really have much more to prove to the people around them. In the first episode, we can take a look at how Tom anxiously worries to Shiv about what to gift Logan for his birthday. When he ultimately settles on a very expensive Patek Philip watch that can range anywhere from about $2,100 upwards to $485,000. In Shiv's head, she knows that the watch will probably not mean much to Logan at all. And this certainly proved to be the case as the watch ultimately ended up being given to the family of servants alongside a non-disclosure agreement to silence them after the events of the baseball game that their son partook in. It's also in the case when Tom wears this Montclair puffer vest that was directly inspired by the real life billionaire of Jeff Bezos. Roman is very quick to make a snarky comment to Tom saying, Nice vest, Wamsgans. It's so puffy. Thank you, Roman. Was it stuffed with your hopes and dreams? Oh, wow. Thus reminding Tom of his outsider status. For people like Roman, Shiv, and Kendall, they tend to look down on people like Tom, who in their eyes feel that they have to overly flaunt their newfound wealth and status. As for cousin Greg, now he is much more of a chameleon, choosing to save face most of the time and pick the side he'll gain the most advantage from. Early on, this is very apparent when he chooses to follow Shiv's lead of forgetting to bring the documents that Roman initially told him to bring to the hospital. As Greg ultimately starts to climb his way up, earning favor from his relatives, solidifying his position at Waystar Royco, and having his very own apartment pretty much gifted to him by Kendall. He really starts to elevate in sense of his style to really fit in to this new world he stumbled upon. So upon first meeting, we see Greg wearing a green utilitarian jacket, a simple button-up, and some slacks to quickly cutting it off to him wearing the animal costume for the job he had lined up at the Waystar Royco amusement parks. In the season finale, Greg has more of a very polished, tidy look, making him look very dashing in his cream suit that is very closely similar to what Tom was also seen wearing in the season finale, which I think probably signifies their allegiance to one another seeing that they are both within the same team. And I think what really drew the characters of Greg and Tom together is that they have this relation towards one another of being in this world that they are so unfamiliar with that they have to navigate themselves. They are ultimately social climbers as they too have an ulterior motive to vie for wealth and status to really demonstrate to others around them that they deserve a seat at the table. And with the evolution of both Greg and Tom, with both their personalities and styles as well, the audience can really begin to recognize that they too can play in the same ballpark as the Roy clan. In conclusion, Matlin certainly did her part of accurately portraying what it means to be part of the 1% creme de la creme class of society that we don't really have a peek at. What these people pay for seems very ludicrous to us, but in the world that they're living in, this is all they know. And it's more, 
I think of an inherited style that they're just accustomed to wanting to emulate. When you can afford anything and everything you want, these individuals are likely to be spending that money towards higher quality investment pieces that'll likely last them a lifetime. It's the culture that they're embedded in and for some, it's all they've ever known. In my research of this video, I also discovered that for many of the characters, they were set out to do some homework themselves as they watched the documentary Born Rich. I definitely recommend watching the video as well as the filmmaker who actually produced that film was the heir to the Johnson & Johnson business. And finally, as the old saying goes, money talks, wealth whispers. Alright, so that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys the next time. Bye!